So if you ever want to see God, you're going to see Jesus Christ. There's not three thrones in heaven. There's only one throne. It's the throne of God and of the Lamb. That is only one throne. Where did Jesus go? He said, if you overcome, you will sit down with me in my throne. He that overcometh will sit down with me in my throne. S-I-T. S-I-T. Sit. S-I-T. Down with me in my throne. Even as I overcame and am set. S-E-T. That's not S-I-T. That's S-E-T. That's a state of glory. Everything's set in heaven, settled in heaven. Well, even as I overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Yes. In his throne. Yes. In his throne. Yes. Somebody said, well, Jesus said he's seated at the right hand of God. Even so, you see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God coming in the Father's glory. Son of Man set at the right hand of God is Christ in his humiliation and glorification. Let's go through this real quick. Your eternal state depends on your revelation of Christ. Your eternal, your eternal destiny. You can't when you're burning it. And when Jesus comes to convince all the ungodly sinners of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, you won't have a second chance and say, wait a minute, the preacher said... The preacher lied to me, Lord. That preacher ain't going to be there with you. You're going to give an account for everything that you've done. You're going to be judged out of the books. That's a book of life and the Biblion, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. And no one's going to stand there with you, and you're going to give an account for all the things that you have done. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. For we all, Paul said, must appear at the judgment seat of Christ. We try to get away from that. Say, well, that's a Bama seat. Well, that's, no, 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 no. Judgment seat of Christ is judgment seat. Let's talk about Christ for a minute. Jesus said, who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Matthew 16. The Son of Man, they say, well, that's Jesus in his humanity. Oh, really? What, who was Jesus' earthly father then? I didn't know he had one. Well, that's Jesus on his humanity side. No, it's not. That's the reason he did, did not say Ben Adam. Ben is a Hebrew word for son. Adam is mankind. And an Adam all died. But the son of man is not Ben Adam. You understand me? It's Bar Enash. Bar is a Chaldonian son of... Why? Because he's going he's gonna to lead and guide everyone who comes into him, regardless if they're Hebrew, Gentile, Greek, uh, uh, no matter who they are, and save all that come unto him. Bar. To the world. <laughs> Tasting death for every man. Enash is not Adam. It is a particular man with, with service, uh, and it is... It, it denotes uh, a work, a work of humiliation to glorification, to humble and take back, or to humble yourself and be associated with someone. Enash, a humiliation to humble yourself. I'm going to submit to you that God himself humbled himself. Amen. Not the Son of God, not the second person up there. God himself humbled himself. Amen. Somebody said, you don't have scripture for that? Yes, I do. Hallelujah to God. We'll take any person, tell anybody you want to. We'll sit down and talk with anybody out there, discuss the Word of God with them anytime, any place. I will not debate it. I've, I've done debates before. They would bring their little char, their army over here, and I'd bring my little seven, my two little three people over here, and they'd have a knockdown drag out. They got mad, we got mad, and nothing, everybody, but everybody dug in, stayed the same. We don't debate the Word. If you want it out of a pure heart, we'll sit there and talk to you for days on end. But if you want to debate it and prove your right, then we don't have time for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not debate. Simply, you believe it or you don't. Jesus, Philippians 2, verse 5 through 10, who was in the form of God. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Jesus, in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. That's God himself. They said, you're not yet 50 years old. Have you seen our father Abraham? 
He said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it. Before Abraham was, I am. He is that God of glory. All things were made by him. He was in the world. The world was made by him, and the world knew of God. That's Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, 16, 17 said, All things, whether it be visible and invisible, thrones, but foul power, were made by him. And the book of Revelation said, All things were made by him, for him, and for his good pleasure. Everything was made by Jesus Christ. He is the word of God. John 8, 24 said, said, except you believe that I am he, the Father, you will die in your sins. This they understood not. He spake to them of the Father. So they were up to Christ. We're going to give you Christ today. And then we're going to talk about a gospel tent revival where we're going to see the miracles of God revealed and to, the, to the people out here, to the old bar owner that lives down the road and uh, the mechanic down over here and there, that whoever walks in there, they tell him that God's going to move. You'll see that God will confirm his word and show his power that he is God and God alone. Hallelujah. I'm going to let Melanie tell you how Brad, my son, was raised from the dead after four hours being dead. Somebody said, I don't believe it. I don't care what you believe. Hallelujah and the God. We're going to preach the word. Jesus, being in the form of God, thought of robbery to be equal to God, made himself of no reputation. Why? Because a man lost it. On this side is mankind. This is mankind's side. This is a man. And Adam all died. I think we were all born in Adam. He's our great, 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 and flesh and flesh and sin, sin can be and brings forth sin, sin brings forth death. So let no man say we was tempted, tempted of God. God tempteth no man. Yet this man, to fulfill the law, will be tempted in all points, like as we are. Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, God himself, in the form of God's spirit, Philippians 2, verse 6, made himself of no reputation. It's only one time in the word of God. Only one place. And it literally means to set aside your dignity and set aside your glory and take upon yourself a lower estate. Made himself of no reputation. Not some reputation. No reputation. No. Did he, did, did he cease and desist from being God? No. He just made himself of no reputation. Laid aside his glory. Why? Because he's got to have a man. And all have sinned, come short of the glory of God, none good, no, not one. So who's going to be that man? Who is going to be that man? God will literally, my own arm will bring salvation to myself. God was in Christ, reconciling the word to himself. So he will make himself of no reputation, take upon him the form of a servant. And all of Isaiah speaks about my servant. In whom well pleased, my servant. Over here, he's spirit. But wait a minute. That law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful, and sin reigns by death. Now man is shut up all their lifetime unto death. So it's only through death that you can redeem mankind back because the penalty is death. Well, God is spirit. But he makes himself of no reputation. Well, somebody said, well, he didn't reveal his name in the Old Testament if he's God. No, he didn't. Why? Because that was not his permanent dwelling, his permanent manifestation, his permanent revelation. He was in the burning bush. If he'd have stayed in the burning bush, and that was going to be his literal tabernacle, his literal revealing to mankind, his literal manifestation, we would still be going to the burning bush today and going, oh, holy bush, and bow down before that bush. If he was that angel that Abraham called Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that angel, literally, if he'd have stayed in that angelic form, we would then be worshiping that angel. But he took not upon him uh, the nature of angels. He took upon him the seed of Abraham. Who? God himself. What he took upon him. Not them. Not the second person that God hit. God took upon him the form of a servant. 
made himself of no reputation, Philippians 2, 6, made, of him, made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. You know how many people know that? Oh, no, Brother Peter, that's the second person of the Godhead. You'll burn. You will burn. Somebody said, I don't think so. Well, you go your way. Took upon himself the form of a servant. Who? God made himself of no reputation. Took upon him the form of a servant. And only when he would all the fullness of the Godhead dwell or house permanently in Christ Jesus bodily, one body, only then would he reveal his name forever. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, which is Jehovah is salvation. Jesus, being in the form of God, made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. He didn't cease and desist for being God. He just literally put off the glory so he could become a man. Well, wait a minute. He's going through that law. He's made and under the law. Somebody said, well, he sent forth his son. How did he send him forth? Show me any scripture in the word of God that said, God said unto the son, go down and die for the sin of the world. How did he send him? Galatians 4, verse 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. How? Made of a woman. Made and under the law. Made of a woman. That's how God sent it. God sent his word and healed them. Is the word separate from God? There's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. He sent his word and healed them. The word is the spirit of God in action, moving. It is a dynamic, the way of life. Not the place of light, the way of light. It's always moving, always dynamic. So what's the, pre what's the difference here than what you hear down the road? Very simply, that God himself, whose name is Jesus, being in the form of spirit, took upon himself the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men. God himself, the Father of glory, the Word of the Holy Ghost, took upon himself the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men. Who? God himself. Not the Son of God, for the Son of God is the Father revealed. The Son of God has two components. He is the Father of glory, the Word of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, Jehovah, Lord, El Shaddai, Elohim, whatever you want to call it, in a body of flesh and blood, that's the Son of God. If you've got just a spirit, you've got the Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost, but you don't have the Son of God. If you've got just a man, you don't have the Son of God. If you've got the Son of God, you've got the Father manifest in a body of flesh and blood in the days of his flesh who went back to his former glory, set down in the Father's throne, Revelation 3.21. When you have that revelation, you have a revelation of Christ. There is no other revelation. There is no other salvation. They accept in the name. There's no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved at the name of Jesus, Acts 4, 12. That Jesus Christ, the Lord, is that spirit. You ask somebody, who's the Lord? They said, the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 17, the Lord is that spirit. And with the spirit of the Lord is liberty. We all with open face behold the glass of the glory of the Lord changes to the same image. I'm going to slow down here in a minute when I get to the, the word. This is just some icing on the cake. We'll get in the word in a minute. Here, Jesus is in the form of God. He makes himself of no reputation, sets aside his glory, puts off the glory, takes upon him the form of a servant made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself to the death, even the death of the cross. That is the made himself of no reputation. God humbled himself, not the Son of God. God humbled himself to be a man. In the days of his flesh, he will have no glory because he's made himself of no reputation. When he's born, even though he's the Spirit of God, it's made of no reputation. He's work, working as a man alone because a man lost it. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Therefore, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. Even as offense is by one, so also is a free gift by one. That is the man, Christ Jesus. He made, laid, laid aside that glory to become that man. He's veiled in a body of flesh and blood. Him hath God the Father sealed, secreted, veiled, uh, hidden in a body of flesh and blood. Therefore, Jesus has no glory when he's born, even though he's got the Spirit of God without measure. For God giveth not the Spirit, but measure unto him. They come and offer gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold is the glory of God. If gold is what you get, gold is the glory of God. They realize that that baby was God Almighty. They gave him gold. Frankincense, you're going to die. There, there's the frankincense that you're going to die. So God of glory is going to die. There's your gold, there's your frankincense. And myrrh, 
That's what you give at the marriage sale ceremony. Why? Because he's going to get himself a bride. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, they don't make any difference. There's only three gifts given. There was only three wise men. They were 30 wise men, maybe more. They never traveled in three. The wise men there was in 20, 30, and 40, 50 caravans. There was not, there was three gifts given, not three men. The three men of Orient are, no, no, no. Shepherds in the field. There's more lives. Jesus had long hair, pretty little face, light shining down from heaven. He's sitting there praying, light on him. He looks almost like a girl. And ain't the God I serve. The Bible said, well, somebody said, well, he had a Nazarite vow. No, he did not. He was born in Nazareth. He didn't have a Nazarite vow. He came eating and drinking. They say, behold, uh, uh, a glutton and a wine bibber. He didn't abstain from wine. He drank wine. They said a glutton, a glutton and a wine bibber. He pulled his hair. That's the reason when the Roman army came down there to get him. They couldn't, they couldn't find him among because he had his hair pulled. He didn't have long hair. We have to lift up Jesus and give him the glory due to his name. While he is in this body of flesh, he is, he is under the law. Galatians 4, verse 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. How? Made of a woman. Made in under the law. Under the law. Why? Because that man will have no glory. He will literally have to fast, pray. Daily the word of God will be his delight to show us the way, truth, and life to get back to him. God working salvation in and of himself alone, Ephesians 1. Well, Jesus there will have no glory. He didn't walk in, be born, and he said, oh, you're the son of God. And he says, watch this. Boom, there's electricity, fire flying out of his hand. Fifty men running before his chariot going, whoa, the son of God is here. No, he took on him the meanest of flesh. He literally, one of the poorest families, there he literally, he grew in favor with God and man, showing us the way from the uttermost, the guttermost to the uttermost. He literally fasted, prayed. He grew in favor with God and man as a man. Why? Because he's made himself of no reputation. He's emptied out of glory. All his glory's gone to become that man. You realize that? How much did he love you? I'm going to tell you something else. I may, I'm, I'm, I'm going to really make you mad. Wait, if what, what kind of a man would you say, uh, I'll tell you what, I know sin down in the world, so you, my son, you go down and die for the sin of the world. If I was a son, I'd say, why don't you go down and die? What kind of a God would tell his son to go down and die? That was God himself, son. The Son of God is the Father manifest. It is the Father manifest. It's God that died for you. It's the Lord that God Almighty that died for you. How much did he love you? My God, he saw you in his death, plural. He tasted death for every man. So this is true. Like the light of every man that cometh into the world. Jesus will have no glory, even though he's God manifest in flesh. He's the Word made flesh. He is the Holy Ghost in flesh and blood. He will have no glory. He will have to fast, pray, daily read the Word of God, showing us the way, the truth, and life is our example of what we have to do. And uh, then about the age of 12, perfect government of God, he goes there, they said they were amazed at his knowledge. What, know you not that I must be about my father's business? Somebody said, well, that's a little brat. Tell his mama. He never called her mother. Woman. Why? Because he wasn't the son of any man. Well, the son of man is not flesh. John 3, 13. No man hath ascended up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, even the son of man which is in heaven, and Jesus was standing there in shoe leather. Amen. Why? The son of man is that second man, that second Adam, the last Adam. The first Adam was of the earth, earthy. The second Adam is the Lord from heaven. Amen. Not the Lord Junior. Not the Lord, not the Lord uh, second person, his son somewhere. The Lord himself. Well, Jesus then, he is fasting, praying, daily the word of God is his delight. 
He's growing in favor with God and man. He's glorifying, God is glorifying his own human body of flesh and blood. Not by faith, but by his divine love. He loved us that much. He's this man, literally he's made himself with no reputation to be literally veiled in flesh. That veil is to say his flesh. That veil of that temple was Jesus' flesh. And he is under the law, just like us. Hebrews 2 says, For as much then as the children are protectors of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That in all things he was made like unto his brother. Hebrews 4.15 said he was tempted at all points like as we are, yet without sin. Who? God himself. God can't be tempted. Yeah, he can if he makes himself of no reputation, sets aside all of his glory, takes upon him another form of a servant, and literally, literally made him no reputation. And only as this man obeys God in crucifying the flesh with the affections and the lust, then can only then can God, fulfilling his own law, can God reveal himself and show himself through the man. And he won't do that until he's age 30. The law says that the high priest, and the Aaronic priesthood, the Levitical priesthood says that the high priest takes his office at age 30. Jesus being the apostle and high priest of the profession of our faith will take his office and his ministry at age 30. Why? To fulfill the law. He's fulfilling the law in all things. He's jumping through every hoops. He's being tempted at all points like as we are, yet without sin. He doesn't blow it in his body, soul, or spirit one time. Jesus, there being about the age of 30, began his ministry. The first thing he has to do is have the transfer of the Levitical priesthood uh, under Aaron to him. They ask, obviously, you have to do something. How do you change the priesthood? If I am a Levitical priest and I take my... Uh, office at age 30, then I have to retire at age 50. I have a son. How do I transfer this to my son? Stand up a minute. Brother Matt, I tell my son to break it, but he's got a... His, how many believe it got to pull a new talus bone in that ankle? Now, we've seen creative miracles. Brad's kidneys were knocked out. They didn't work for... I'm going to let Melanie tell you all about that. I want her to close this service prayer line, and then I want you to believe and stand in here with us that there's going to be souls in this, in this uh, meeting coming up that God's going to touch Longview. I want God to touch Longview here and the surrounding areas and under this gospel tent revival. Amen. A lot of people don't go to church. They don't want to walk into church. They, you know, they church out. They just church. Don't want no more church. I'm church poor. I don't want no more church. I can understand that. So we'll take the church to them. Three things has to be done. Number one, he pour oil on him. Number two, he would lay hands on him. Number three, he said, "Die, our priest of my stead." The ironic, the Levitical high priest would leave. He would retire, and his son took over. Jesus, being about the age of thirty, who was under the course of uh, 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 John the Baptist, under the course of Zechariah, of the course of Abijah, under the Levitical priesthood. There, Jesus came to John. John the Baptist, he was baptized beyond Jordan in Beth Arba. Beth, house of Arba, crossing over the same place where the children of Israel passed over the Jordan River. Coming into the promised land is exactly where John was baptizing with water of repentance. At that point, Jesus came to John the Baptist. He said, I have me to be baptized of you. And says thou to me, of whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. And Jesus said, suffer to be so to fulfill all righteousness. What's righteousness? I came from the Father. I go back to the Father. That's righteousness, John 16. Well, John agrees. He takes there. He lays hands on Jesus. Two, puts him under the water. That be the anoint. And three, raises him back up. All he's got to do is speak over him. But it's not John that speaks. There's a voice come from heaven. Until that time, Jesus is not anointed. He's not moved on by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has made himself of no reputation. God himself made himself of no reputation. There's no move of God, no miracle, no nothing. Until he comes into his ministry, being about the age of 30, why? To fulfill the law as our high priest at age 30. Amen. Now, with that said, Jesus said, as he's coming up out of the water straightway, the heavens opened to him. 
The heavens, yeah, he saw everything. He saw the, the angels ascending and descending upon the heart of man. He could, he, and as a man, as a man, a flesh and blood man, just like you and me, that God had given this power unto men. When he told us to heal that sick of the palsy, he said, that so, so that you'll know that son of man have power on earth to forgive sins, he said, the sick of the palsy will rise. Take your bed and go to your house. The man that's it, why? And they were amazed that God had given this power unto men. You see, he's a man. And now God's anointed him to fulfill the law. He hasn't missed it one thing, spirit, soul, or body. Now he takes on the, not a Levitical priesthood. He takes on him a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. And that's the reason you'll hear God say later on, this is my beloved son in whom well pleased. Hear ye him. Don't hear that law. He's fulfilling the law. Hear ye him. The prophets say, thus saith the Lord God. Jesus said, but I say unto you, I'm God. I'm telling you the spiritual essence of that law. 